Welcome everybody to the Rock Life Podcast. We are live and in the house. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna intro in how we do for our Rock Life Podcast. Is that okay? Do, yeah. Has anyone checked out our Rock Life Podcast? Uh, just up top, I want I want to thank you first of all. We started on YouTube, and just in the last couple weeks, we are now on Apple Podcasts, and you can now find us on Spotify. It's under Rock Life Podcast. That's kind of the logo right now. So if you look under Rock Life Podcast, that's how you will find us. And we've been doing a lot of sermon rewinds where we discuss and talk about the previous week's message. And our prayer, we, we pray over the podcast, is that it blesses you, is that something that's supplemental to you as we get into the Word of God. And Pastor Dan had the idea to have one of these sessions kind of be a collaborate, like a, a collab of a Rock Live podcast and RockCon. So we didn't know what the temperature was going to be like. Hey, so it would be a good excuse to be in the main sanctuary if it's 100 degrees outside because in the IE, you know, Pastor Julian, you don't know nothing about that 100 degree. Well, you, you, we'll get, we'll get <laughs> 100 degree in September. Um, yeah. But uh, so we are blessed. Many of you are going to be coming in. Now, one of the secrets to the Rock Live podcast for me is I wear these headphones and I don't know about something about the headphones that like dials me in and I feel like I get to uh, ask more focused, pointed questions from Pastor Dan that maybe I wouldn't otherwise. You know, I lose my sense, right? It's like lower my inhibitions. Can you ask the senior pastor that is also your boss this question about the message? Is he going to think I didn't pay attention to the sermon? Well, I put on those headphones and now I just kind of like, I don't know. I, was like, I, don't, know, I don't know what it is. But let's intro. Hey, welcome to the Rock Live podcast. We are here live. I am here with Pastor Dan and also a very special guest, Pastor Julian. Uh, welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So um, obviously what we want to do is we, I have some questions that I had thought about. Just again, I'm going to pretend I have these headphones. Uh, but also give an opportunity for you, Pastor Julian, to introduce yourself. This is your first time here to the Rock Church and we're not really centered, but not your first time to, city, to the city of San Bernardino. So uh, maybe introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you. I know, I mean, that could be a long time, but just what, maybe a quick intro you're going to share in, in your message here in a moment, but maybe what you're not going to say there, or who cares if you duplicate yourself, because we're on the podcast. We're on the, right. yeah. It's different. <laughs> yeah, it's different. Well, my name is Julian, and uh, I'm born and raised in San Bernardino, California. Let's oh. go. Um, used to hang out at the mall in Carousel Mall. Oh, yeah. You don't know nothing about that. R.I.P. And if you're really an OG Century City Mall, oh. if you're really an OG <laughs> back in the day. So, um, yeah, so I'm born and raised from this area, uh, lived in San Bernardino to, since I was 10, 11, and then moved over to Rialto, went to Frisbee okay. Middle School. Oh, we got some Somebody's <laughs> cheering for Frisbee? I'm just happy you made it. I'm happy. God is good. You made it out of Frisbee Middle School. Praise God. Uh, and then Eisenhower High School, and then... Um, pursued you know music and stuff moved to LA many years later whole story yeah got got married two kids and pastor a great church in LA called Oasis awesome awesome pastor Dan you are here on the hills in the middle of hosting an amazing conference we want to thank you pastor for uh, putting your faith out and believing for this conference and and uh, hosting uh, such an amazing time and amazing uh, lineup of guests not just speakers a guest to the house, and hopefully, I don't think any of them will be guests much, just guests much longer. I feel like we're meeting some new family. Yeah, no, I think that um, one of the neat things about uh, this conference in particular is that a lot of the guys, especially, um, you know, Frank and Zyda, they've ministered here at The Rock. I ministered there. Um, you know, uh, Jeff Osborne's been here numerous times, and um, we're friends, you know what I mean? Like, we'll, yeah. we'll call each other up and, and talk about different things in life and things like that. And um, so we share life together uh, with, with Javen. Uh, he's ministered here at The Rock, and um, we've, we've supported his church uh, when they were first starting six years ago. And, and um, like we just saw in the last session, we're continuing to support as he gets into his building and that sort of a thing. So it's really family. And, and, and just one of the neat things about Pastor Julian and Oasis Church is that there is a family connection from our founders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Pastor Jim and Deborah knew Philip and Holly New Oasis Church, uh, you know, Holly and Pastor Deborah would minister at the Color Conference in Australia every year. I mean, just like every year, these yeah. massive women's events, and the two of them would preach, and, and uh, we have, we've had uh, Philip and Holly here at The Rock. 
Um, and I believe that they've had Jim and Deborah there at Oasis Church. And so it's neat to see second generation. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so when I met Julian and when I was hearing what God was doing in his life and, and, uh, and seeing the process, kind of, you know, on the sidelines you watch, but I'm just, you know, out here cheering. And, um, you know, for, for us, it's been nine years. For you, it's been, you said five years, right? And so just to be on the sidelines watching you guys just kill it, man. I, I, I can't say it any other way. You guys are doing so good. And um, at least that's what we see. You know, yeah. I, know there, I know you're seeing everything else on the back end, but from, from our perspective, you know, when I, when I see uh, a handoff like that, and when I see health of a church, and when I see a real pastor stepping up and stepping in, I mean, I rejoice because I know, I know what it took for us to get here. I know, I know the journey that we went on. And so we, I mean, psh, even though it's your first time here, man, you're already family. You yeah. know what I mean? You're, you're grafted in. It's yeah, just, yeah. that's just how it is. So we're blessed to have you here. And we're so grateful for you and grateful for Oasis Church in Los Angeles. Yeah. Well, we're about halfway through the conference thus far, and uh, in, in as we were sharing with the congregation, encouraging them to come, Pastor, you had mentioned and put on our hearts uh, about what the, the power of a conference can be, the, you know, those, those conference moments. So I wanted to ask both of you, uh, maybe one of your favorite conference moments of conferences you've been to, sp spoke at, whatever it might be. What's a moment at a conference that maybe has marked you that would encourage maybe some of the people here? Because anybody maybe gotten a word thus far already? Um, but I just, you know, something that marked you that would encourage us, like, oh, yeah, I, I want some of that. I want to believe God for one of those life-changing moments that will mark me here at this conference this year. Um, can I say two moments? Yeah, of course. Uh, one of them, obviously, I'm here, but one of them was uh, here when the young people went to the altar and got on their knees I don't know if I've seen that anywhere, wow. um, ever. I think that um, if you ask young people to raise their hand, um, they will. But I don't know if I've ever been anywhere where young people, that many, came to an altar to receive a touch from God. So that was wow. yeah. uh, <laughs> crazy. That was crazy. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other one was uh, several years ago, um, I wasn't in ministry, um, was just deciding to pursue God and really um, had a weekend when I fell into some old habits. Um, and then I went to a conference and felt like the call of God on my life was over because I'd fallen into some old habits. And um, some older gentleman walked up to me in the middle of the conference and said, he was in tears. And he said, I've never done this before, but the Lord told me to tell you his mercy is new every morning. And uh, yeah. wow. changed my life. Wow. And I cried in this man's arms wow. for 30 <laughs> minutes. And uh, never seen him since. But uh, it was powerful. Wow, so those, yeah. those would be two. Yeah, that's sure. awesome. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I, I uh, shared this with the church beforehand. Um, but, you know, one of, one of the moments that uh, I had, I'm, I'm going to share two as well. Yes. So just since we're sharing well, two. That's, yeah, it's, it's the I new broke, rule, too. Yeah, 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 no, I think, I think it's, yeah, it's we worth it. the rule. Two to two. The, the so, question, rewind. Yeah. Hey, what are two moments? Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. There you go. That's, that's the real question, that right? Marked. That's we, what we, we should have asked yeah. us. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll share one at another conference and one here, but I'm going to start reverse order. Um, I've shared this with the church that uh, I know that I am called the San Bernardino because I sat in a conference and I heard the, the guy that was leading that conference at the time was talking about pastoring the few. Now, I was already a pastor. I was already leading. I was leading the young adults at the time here at The Rock. And um, I remember it, it sort of flipped my understanding of leadership structure upside down. You know, usually you think about the leaders at the top, and then you got people underneath them. And you can almost make this pyramid, right, to where the, the leader's at the top, and then everybody else is down underneath him. And if you're at the top, then you've got the leader. You're, you're leading thousands, right? But he flipped that upside down, and he said, if you, if you really will pastor the few, if you will really pour into just, just the people that you can, and even if it's not a lot, even if it's just a few, if you'll just pastor those people and love those people and, uh, and, then, and then empower those people to lead others, that, that really, you know, when we think about the leaders, you know, in the Old Testament of tens, of hundreds, and of thousands, we think about the leaders of tens, they must not be very good leaders because they can only handle ten people. Mm. And, but the leaders of thousands, they've got to be the great ones because they, they're handling a bunch of people, right? But I don't believe that's what God is saying. God is saying the leader of tens is poor is a leader of leaders then those tens are leading hundreds those hundreds are leading th really the leaders of thousands are the ones who 
They can just say, hey, they told me to tell you this, right? But the leaders of tens are the ones that are gathering strategically and saying, all right, you're going to go and you're going to take this group. You're going to go over on this side. You're going to attack this side of the mountain. You, you're going to take that group over there. So the, the leader of tens is really at the, at the top, but they're, they're really at the bottom of that, that leadership structure, if you will. And, and I remember I had that, that understanding and I realized, man, I got to pastor my home well. And, and, and in the church, if I will lead leaders, then those leaders will touch the multitudes of people. And we've, we've expressed this at our, at our staff table numerous times. After that session, I remember I just sat down and I told God, I said, God, I'll pastor the few. And I wept. And, and I could show you the seat in the stadium where we were meeting. And God spoke to me and said, I've called you to love the people of San Bernardino. I've called you to pastor there. And so you cannot talk me out of San Bernardino. This is where God has called me, and I'm not going anywhere. But I heard that at a conference. Uh, this conference, last night, um, man, what a moment. Uh, I, I've had some, some supernatural experiences where God has touched me at conferences and things like that. And so many times when we're worshiping the Lord, um, I can sense the anointing of God. And, and this may sound weird to people who haven't experienced some of these supernatural things, the only way I can describe it is that there's moments in worship where I know that the anointing is there. Yeah. And, it, and it, I can almost sense, it's almost like warm oil being poured over my head and just dripping down. And, and I just know the anointing of God is here because I, I, I almost sense it just uh, over my body in a, in a physical way. It just feels like there's something, but I know it's in the spirit, right? Well, last night I'm over there and uh, it was like the second song in the worship set so after I got up and exhorted and went back down we sang a song and then that second song that we sang in the worship set I got down on my knees and just started weeping before the Lord and I could sense the anointing of God and it started like that I was like oh here it comes right and I'm thinking same old same old where it didn't drip it stopped and just rested on my back on like over my neck over my shoulders and it just sat there hot and I was like what is that because that's not the anointing that I normally feel. And I, I said, God, what, what is that? What's going on? I heard one word in my spirit, mantle. Wow. Now, now, everybody that said, wow, was at the service. Because I said, okay, God, if this is what you're speaking to me, then when Samuel Rodriguez gets up here to minister, if he speaks that over me, then I'll know that you're doing something in yeah. this moment. Come on. I mean, for our, our, our viewers and our podcast listeners that, that weren't at the service, Samuel not only said the word about a billion times in his message, <laughs> he preached on Elijah passing the mantle to Elisha. Yeah, yeah. Then he grabbed his assistant's coat and prophetically put it over our shoulders yeah. and said, God is putting a new mantle on you, me and Pastor Jessica. And I just was like, God? Yeah. What on earth? Yeah. So yeah, supernatural moments at conferences. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I had one last night. It was yeah. absolutely amazing, but absolutely wonderful. And I'm grateful, grateful to see so many hands of you guys having your, your moments here at the conference as well. Amen. You know, we just are, are, are blessed to see what God is doing. And I believe that testimonies are coming our, our direction. Yeah, so. and we'd love to hear those in email or comments, to, to the testimonies of what God has spoken to you. Uh, and done at these conferences. Man, what a powerful thing. And again, we're just so grateful for the opportunity to gather in this way. And I, and I just have a feeling this isn't our last all-church conference, uh, just because it's been something so special. And people really did miss out. You know, we, yeah. we, we tried to tell them. We tried to tell them to come. Uh, and many of you are here. We're grateful for you here. So the only way I can see it, because I was sitting in the men's session this morning, I'm like, man, this is packed out. Pretty much every seat was taken. And I, and I thought, I was like so grateful for the people that are here. And it made me think like, wait, we tried to tell them, maybe you guys got to get them here. Because you got to, it's one thing for us. Of course, they know that we believe it's special. But they got to hear that you know it's special, that you had an encounter. Man, you got, have you registered for a conference yet? Have you registered for, oh my gosh, last time I came to conference, I got a word. And it's, I've seen it in my life. And I, so we got to get spreading the word. And yeah. I mean, I guess I'm putting the power back in your hands as, as far as being the evangelist. So um, that is powerful and amazing. You actually mentioned one thing that made me want to go into our next question, uh, talking about leadership, and both of you being lead pastors in your own um, respective cities. Uh, Pastor, you are in downtown L.A., uh, in Koreatown, Los Angeles, and here we are in the heart of San Bernardino, in the heart of the Inland Empire. 
Uh, and so we have our own uh, context as far as city, but I believe in terms of leadership, the question that I have for each of you is, as you are looking for people to pour into, to build up, and maybe that are coming on team, what are some characteristics or some attributes that you look for in, in leadership that not that you promote, but that you're like, oh man, I, I see something on that person, uh, and I can see them being on team, or I can see God uh, putting their hand on them uh, in a special way. Again, not just for the church, but just, you know, so if, if, does that make sense? So yeah. characteristics and attributes of, of a leader that you see God doing. Um, I think for me, I think everybody would have a different answer, but in my context, one of the things that I look for is uh, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. I know them, they know me. And so one of the things I look for is a lot of times for people not to skip straight from intimacy with the voice and straight to coffee and hanging out. So I look for in a leader, someone who has been listening to what the spirit has been saying to the church through me or through God's word and their hunger for God's voice and their hunger for God's word is one of the main things I look for. Cause I think that people that want my time, but doesn't don't want time with God oh, come on. is, uh, you yeah. know, I'm not God. Right? right. Um, the second thing I look for is I tend to look for people who are struggling to believe that God can use them because a lot of people believe that God can use me. That's why they're in the church, but the church doesn't flourish and grow until God, they know that God can use them. Mm. And so I look for people that may be, uh, David discontented, more discouraged than he was. So i gravitate towards people that need encouragement, wow. that need that, yeah. um, you know, extra God's with you, God's for you type, type wow. thing. So those would be the, the two things for me. Awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I wholehearted agree, and uh, and I do look for those things as well. And and um, just adding on to that list, one of the things that I oftentimes will look at is is uh, faithfulness. Uh, you know, it says it's required of stewards that one be found faithful. And um, you know, many times ability and you know when we see people's talent, we, even myself, we can get enamored with talent and ability. But I have found that someone with faithfulness will go farther. Than someone with talent and ability because they show up consistently and you know you may not be the best at something you may not be the the most talented when it comes to something but if you'll just simply show up faithfully God will use you you know and so there have been times where there have been people who have had great talent and great ability and, I, and gosh I really wanted them to be in leadership I really wanted them to be a part of what we were doing and so you know in talking to them we'd be kind of like yeah come on you know and they would flake out and so I realized very quickly in my own ministry, you know, I started here doing the young adults and uh, eventually became the executive pastor. I would just look for who's showing up to pray. Not, 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 to, not to sing, not to play guitar, not to preach, right? Because a lot of people would show up to preach, but if you said, hey, we're having a prayer meeting, how, how many people showed up to the prayer meeting, right? You know, how, how many people are, hey, we're, we're going to go do an outreach in San Bernardino on 5th Street, you know? Right. And you guys are invited. How many people are showing up to the outreach, you know? They don't want to preach. They're not looking for a pulpit. They're looking for a person to help. And they're just faithful. They're just, they're showing up, right? And, and I think that's where, you know, the apostle said, find faithful men. Mm-hmm. Full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom who are able to do this work, right? They, they found table waiters. What did God do with two of those table waiters? One of them was Philip the Evangelist. Right. That when we teach on evangelism, who do we point to? Right. Philip, yeah. right? That God used to start a revival in Samaria that, that sent him out to the desert to speak to the eunuch who went back and all of Ethiopia basically became a Christian nation yeah. because yeah. of yeah. his influence. And then was one of the few people in the Bible that just beamed me up, Jesus. He was here and then he's over here in Azotus. And, and I mean, it's just this amazing, that, that, that guy was a table waiter. He showed up faithful with a towel over his arm. Huh. Yep. and serve the, the food to the, the Greek widows who are being overlooked. What about the other one that we want to point out? That, that was uh, a, a guy who became the first martyr of the Christian church. That's Stephen. Do you know that before Stephen was martyred, the Bible says that miracles were done by Stephen? This table waiter was performing miracles. I believe because he was faithful and he showed up, 
because his heart was for God and his heart was for the people that when he was serving these Greek widows and they're going, oh, thank you so much. It's been so hard. I, I've, I've had, you know, this back pain that it's been hard for me to get up. And so thank you for bringing that food to me. Oh, your back's hurting? Let me pray for you. And all of a sudden God heals that widow. And then someone else says, well, hey, if, if, if they got healed, like, it, can, can you pray for my foot? Because I haven't been able to walk in a while. And now he's praying for the foot. And then, then someone else, well, hey, you need to come over to my family. My, my family can't get here. They're all sick. Can you come to the house? And all of a sudden, here's God raising this man up. And then he preaches this scathing rebuke sermon to all of the leaders. They rush him out of the city. And what does he have? He has a vision of Jesus Christ. Not seated at the right hand of God. Because according to the work of redemption, Jesus was seated. But when it came to being... Yeah. On behalf of his faithful servant, what did Jesus do? He stood at the right hand of the Father when Philip was being martyred. Wow. All because he was faithful. Well, what I heard both of you guys say without directly saying the words was that you are looking for people that serve. Remember, the question was about leaders. What do you look for in leaders? And you said servanthood. Servants. So it's almost like servanthood is leadership. It's almost like Jesus said something about that, right? Where I came not to be served, but to serve. Right. And so I think that's an amazing part of, again, looking at the gifts, looking at talents, looking at things that are shiny and people's ambition towards maybe those shiny things or gifted things or the platform. Oh, yeah, I want to serve God from right there. I want to serve God in a place that it can see me. I, I, I know I, I, I have this gift of leadership. I can be in front of people. Pe- people listen to me. People like me. I'm likable. Great. Serve. Yeah. Right? And so without saying it, you guys look for people who are serving. Absolutely. I, I think um, there's a story of one of the great men of God came over, uh, I think, from the United States to, to England, I think it was. I might be getting this story mixed up. I'd have to research it out. But there was a man of God, very successful in the ministry, could preach, that sort of a thing. And went to, I, I can't remember if it was the Salvation Army with William Booth, but um, uh, he, he saw pride in the guy and said, you know what, I'm going to humble this guy. And so he told him, I want you to go, and I want you to shine all the shoes of the guys. Go black their boots, you know, go, go shine them up, right? And so uh, this guy was like, you know, I'll shine those boots better than anyone else. You know, it was just really, really a big thing. But while he was down there serving, he said, I'll do this for you, Lord Jesus. And his heart started to turn. His heart started to change. And he softened and was able to be used even greater capacity. But all because of that, that servant attitude. You know, we don't come into the kingdom proud. God resists the proud. But God gives grace to the humble. And that's where, you know, it, it, if anyone in, endeavors to be a leader, that's, a, that's okay. The Bible does say anybody who... who aspires to a position of leadership it desires a good thing Mm -hmm. but how do we get there well we know that in in the christian world the way up is down and the way down is up right right? it's a backwards kingdom from what the world system is so if you want to be exalted well then you better humble yourself but but if you exalt yourself you will be humbled yeah Yeah. no that, that that's awesome i think um those are the some because I don't not not everyone is like how do I become a leader right but the fact is that we're following Jesus and, and that's our, you know our founding pastor Pastor Jim wrote the book on fellowship in our following Jesus we are actually leading right people are going to see us we are living a life by living a life as a follower we are leading right. Right. does that make sense because people are watching because of the things that we get to do as followers and disciples of Jesus which I think is such a privilege and honor. Uh, in, in that same way. I, I want to change our question here. Uh, you know, we were, we were discussing some of the things that we see overall in, in church and uh, some amazing ministries that, you know, you guys have been in relationship and, and worked with and talking to other pastors and leaders. And uh, Pastor Junior, you mentioned something, that there's a lot of that can be said negatively about the church as a whole and in ministries and leaders, and there's a lot of talk about ministers falling. And, and you know, Pastor Brian talked about this in a recent message where he had said that, um, you know, there, there's for every message or news article that you see about a pastor that's fallen, there's thousands that aren't written. Right. Um, so that being said, what are you hopeful about in, in, in moving forward as, as God is, you know, and, and Pastor Jabin said it this morning, as God is doing something in the earth, what, what, are, what are you hopeful for in your respective cities and in Southern California, in our nation? What are some things that uh, give you hope moving forward as pastor, as people who lead uh, Jesus followers to follow Jesus. 
I think I'm really hopeful about what God's doing in the next generation. Yeah. You know, the people coming up behind us. And I, I'm seeing God move in powerful ways. I think that you can look at the world with like a negative lens. And if you're looking for something crazy, you'll find it. Yeah. If you're looking for something bad, you'll find it. If you're looking for something holy, you'll find it. The Bible says that if you look for God, you will find him. Those yeah. who seek me will be found by me. So for me, I, I, I think um, back to what Pastor Dan was saying, I think if you go back to Stephen, you know, he said he saw Jesus in the middle of his stoning. How hard would it have been to see Jesus as you're getting hit with rocks. And so for me, I think that's the true oh. thing that I'm seeing that I'm most excited about is it feels like sometimes we can only see Christ when things are going well. And I am seeing Christians and believers able to see Jesus in the middle of everything going crazy, yeah. everything. People are still saying, I see the glory of God. People are still believing. Yeah. They're still praying. Amen. They're still interceding. They're still yeah. coming to church. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of reasons not to. There's a lot of reasons not to. And this is a season where we can, um, I'm, I'm seeing people steward their pain well. Mm -hmm. And people giving their pain to God and allowing God to use their pain for his glory and you're seeing it everywhere. I'm seeing uh, preachers raised up. I'm seeing intercessors. I'm seeing the gift of prophecy, the gift of word of knowledge, and people that you wouldn't. And I'm seeing God use, as Jabin said, really foolish things to, to shame the wise. So, uh, yeah, I'm, it, it's been really encouraging. Yeah. I see it everywhere. And I see it here at, at, the, at the Rock Church. It, you, you feel it when you come in the room. So it's super exciting. It's awesome. yeah. 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 Man, I tell you, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, just to see this this wave of of revival and renewal it's it's worldwide and I think that sometimes we get such a narrow focus of especially in the United States you know we're navel gazing we're just you know looking at ourselves only and and, and we we get boxed in and get these blinders on of you know the only thing that's going on on the planet is what's going on here and you know my Bible says that God's eyes are on Jerusalem. And when I see what God is doing in the nations, right? Because all of it's going to go back. I, I mean, there's, there's really going to be a new Jerusalem. And, and, and the Bible says that the glory of the nations is going to come into that place. Uh, you know, God's focus is future focused. He knows the redemptive plan. He tells the, the end from the beginning and, and for me to see the time and the space that we're living in, the spiritual climate, to see the signs and to see the things that were written beforehand and to know, you know, Pastor Frank this morning was talking about it to the men. He was saying, it's going to get darker. It's been prophesied. In the middle of that, we need to be with Jesus, you know. Those things, to see people when they get it, when, when people start to catch that, that, hey, doesn't matter what happens doesn't matter how dark it gets. There is a remnant of God's people that, that in these end times, in these last days, is going to be out there being the witness and the testimony. And we know that there's coming a, a harvest because the Bible says that there will be the former rains and the latter rains that are given. And it says that the reaper is going to catch up with the sower. That means that there's going to be such a harvest that the people that are planting seeds and the guy that's coming behind him to reap the fruit of that harvest he's gonna be like hurry up because I'm, I'm about ready to outpace you here you know and and I, I think about this time just random floaty thought we, we kind of we didn't start with something fun pastor yeah. usually we start with something fun we usually have some kind of a banter of we, some we've got sort, a, some, some little so I'll, I'll put some fun in here <laughs> we'll interject it in the middle this time but uh, I remember I was working construction and I, and I was uh, working painting and I had a friend who had discovered me he was essentially my SPT his name is Tom a wonderful man of God. He, he helped out with the youth here at The Rock. And, um, but when I got saved, he, he was my SPT, if you will. He wasn't called that at the time. It was a different church. But, um, but Tom told me, he said, okay, Dan, I want you to, to cut in. Okay, so that's where you cut, you know, painting close to the corners of the lines, right? He says, you cut in. And he goes, I'm going to roll, you know, with the big, the big pole and the roller. And he goes, don't let me catch up to you. 
Well, sure enough, don't you know, I'm up there trying to be all perfect and pristine with my lines. Make it, and he's like, damn, I'm catching up to you. Hurry up. And so I'm like, oh, shoot, you know. And so I'm jumping down the ladder, getting pushing it over and going further. And, and I'm catching up to you. Better hurry up, you know. And, and that's almost what I picture with the, the sower and the reaper. It's like, hey, you better hurry up because I'm catching up to you. You better go tell someone else about Jesus because I'm coming behind you because we're going to snatch him up. Like, like it's, it's just going to be so much. And that excites me that in the midst of all this darkness and everything that the devil would love to elevate himself and, 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 and make people, you know, get so concerned about the end times. I used, to, I used to shudder at the thought. I used to think, God, I don't want you to come back in my time. And I know it's very selfish, but being very transparent, I, I wanted to raise my kids. I wanted to, you know, raise my grandkids. And somewhere down the future, Lord, you can come back, but don't do it when I'm here. And I had to cross over my thinking that, that if the Lord comes back in my day, it's not a bad thing. That, that I don't have to fear the end. No matter how bad it looks or what, the things that I don't understand in Revelation and Daniel and Matthew, you know, the, those end times things that we all go, ooh, you know what, it's going to be so bad. And we've watched the movies and read the books and all that kind of stuff that it seems so bad. And yet, there's going to be something that, that when I look in the Bible and I see the end time harvest, when I see the witness, when I see the great army coming with the lamb, oh man, I get excited about that. And so seeing this groundswell and this wave of revival starting and it's already here i mean 30,000 baptisms this this past year and and uh you know california uh will be baptized california will be saved you know we've been a part of these events and different things but just to see all of the young people at our altars every week you know and and, and i don't know if you're experienced in this as well it's just like man i'm looking around and i'm like this is a whole new church you know, we've got our fixtures. We've got the people that have been here forever and ever. Amen. And, uh, you know, we'll bury them in the courtyard. But, I mean, we've, there's like a whole lot of new people that, like, I'm just like, man, look at all these new faces. Look, I, I don't know this church. And so I find myself preaching the basics again. I find myself preaching faith again. We just did Your World Series. The re part of the reason why we did that is because we had to teach marriage and family and finances and the, those foundational things that we know. But, my goodness, these guys that are getting saved, they don't know. And, and so it, it just really, man, it's what an exciting time to live in. That's amazing. Man, well, you know, that, that's all the questions that I have, but I want a, us to do a closing thought. And, you know, our, our podcast is a sermon, it's a sermon recap. Uh, so may, maybe in your closing thought, it could be kind of a nutshell or a recap of what you're experiencing or seeing. Again, that would encourage us uh, about this conference, something that, that some of the takeaways uh, again, I know we talked about some of those precious moments, but even just the takeaways of like, oh, what we're charged up in. Um, and you've been here just one session, but I mean, you, you, you shared about the impact that's, I was, I was so blessed hearing how God's blessed you in that. So maybe you can share some of that as we close with a, a thought. I think uh, for me, when I come into places like this, um, one of the things about being a lead pastor that has been really difficult is finding places where I can meet with God. And I'm not talking about at home. I'm talking about when I go to church, I'm there to help people meet with God. So it's challenging. And then there's a lot of places to go and everybody's talking about church growth and church leadership. And I think that leadership is often used more than God's presence, God's power, Mm. surrendering to the Holy Spirit it's like leadership has replaced obedience in some ways wow. and even sacrifice and so I had this realization a few years ago where I'm thankful for the church we have the resources that we have the influence that we have but I really needed a touch from God and I didn't know where to go mm. I mean if I needed uh, finance strategy I plenty of places to go. If I needed to figure out how to do connect groups better, plenty of places to go. And I needed a touch from God and I wasn't sure where to go. And what I'm hoping that people get from participating, not just here, but the conference, is that there would be just such a spirit of honor for what's happening here. Because I do think that uh, the Bible says Jesus could not do mi many miracles in his hometown because there was not honor. Not that he wouldn't, he was restricted. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just praying for a revelation of what's happening here. 
you know, Jabin, Pastor Jabin mentioned it earlier that uh, Jacob said he called it the house of God, Bethel, when he realized what was happening. Yeah. So before it was just a nap on a rock. Yeah. He realized what was happening. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think, I'm not trying to be, you know, hyper prophetic, but I do think the church is called the rock. And what's in my spirit is that I don't want anybody here sleeping on the rock. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Um, and being sleepy when there's transactions. Why did he call it the church? He didn't call it the church because of 30 minutes of worship. He didn't call it the church because there was a word. He saw transactions happening between yeah. heaven and earth. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a man who was asleep on the rock became the house of the Lord. So I believe there are 1,000 people at least in this movement that are asleep on the rock. And what the Lord's going to do in the next six months, he's going to wake them up and they're going to say, this is the house of the Lord. And I didn't know it. And I didn't know it. <laughs> I mean, you asked. That's what I... Can I... And I didn't know it. I sleep on the rock, I didn't know it. Wow. And I think I didn't sleep on the rock and I didn't know it. It's like, man, this is not the same. I wish it was more like this, oh, asleep wow. on the rock. Man, I wish I could get, they'd let me do this, asleep on the rock. Man, I wish, man, I don't know, man, conference. I've already went to church this week, asleep on the rock. So, so the, when you have resources, the temptation will be to increase the promotion, but the Lord is increasing the transactions. And even the person sleeping on the rock will be like, see the transaction between heaven and earth. And like, this is not just a napping place. This is the house of the Lord and I didn't know it. In Jesus' name. And uh, I'm sorry, I know you gotta go. But I will say this. Um, and I don't wanna bring it up early because I don't wanna start crying. Uh, Pastor Samuel Rodriguez has been to our church before. And while he didn't preach the mantle message, he did, uh, he has a mantle uh, prophetic anointing on his life. And he came to our church in 2018 and um, he pulled me on platform and he didn't say it publicly like you, but he pulled me on platform and said that there was a mantle on my life for ministry and for the church. And that if I would commit myself to holiness, my influence at Oasis would never stop. He gave me the same word and at the time, I didn't know I was the next pastor of the church. Wow. And so what God is doing here, when you share that story, I'm like, oh, okay. And this is the house of the Lord. And so I pray that you would honor it. You would honor your pastors. And maybe even more importantly, honor what God's doing here. I'm not even going to talk about nothing after that. Um, I am going to wrap up the, the final session and so my takeaways I'll, I'll yeah. save for my session but uh, that yeah. that that was amazing thank you wow so good well I think we got right back on track um, so we're going to dismiss here shortly uh, we have I see people ready we, oh man, we have wonderful servants here uh, we want you to make sure that you take your trash out uh, there's going to be some time uh, for a break to use the restroom, uh, just freshen up. If that's, I don't know, freshen up. I don't know. Do you want to wrap up the yeah, podcast? I'm, I'm going to freshen oh, up. Oh, yes, we should just close out the podcast. Yeah, we should, probably because we're still recording. Where are we so, at? yeah, I mean, hey, for those you of you on the, on the podcast, if you want to throw your trash away and, you know, <laughs> use the restroom before your next podcast, you hey, definitely can. <laughs> hey, thank you for tuning in to the Rock Live podcast. <laughs> As always, we are so grateful that you are here with us. Subscribe, like, comment. Now, again, on Spotify, however you're listening to this, we'd love to hear the amazing testimonies. It's always cool every week as people come up to us at church or even out and about around town uh, that you are encouraged by the podcast. We're so blessed. Uh, tell somebody about it, and we will see you next time.